And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. When I first heard about Johari, I made a little fun of it because it's about selling gems and that's not a unique theme in the gaming world. However, the fact is that selling of gems is a theme that works well. So I was certainly very interested in trying this out, a two to four player game. And when I found out the main mechanism of the game, in which you have a handful of cards and on your turn you play a card, and then that card gives you an action that you do and you take your cards back and that's how you work things. I like that. That's one of my favorite mechanisms. It's in some of my favorite games. And so I was very excited to try out this game. Let's see how it plays. the main board area and up here we have stores each store sells a different kind of gem the last store sells gold and victory point cards down here we have markets and those markets can have whatever gems are in them now I have it set up here for a four player game at the beginning of each turn you'll draw over uh, cards equal to the number of players and place them in the top markets uh, basically by what gem they are so there we have different gems in each market then in the bottom market you're just going to put a card into each of these regardless of what type it is. So you can see down here, you're likely going to have different stuff in each of the markets and in the stores. It's going to be the same. Now each player has a player board here and they also have up here a, a marker which marks how much gold they have. Uh, what's going to happen is each player is going to take their turn. They might have to spend gold for their turn and they move it to the bottom. And once they're all moved, they'll go back to the top and whoever has the most gold gets to go first each turn. Now the way turns work is players are going to look at their own player board here and there's going to be a day and during each day players are going to pick one of these cards from their hand and play it here. When you turn that card over, if there's a cost at the bottom, for example this one here, you have to pay that much gold. Uh, except in, in the second part of a day you have to pay two less gold than what it normally would be and the third card is always free. So what do the cards do? Well the first card, the bak Bakshish, here you just move your gold token on the gold track two spaces forward. So this is a way to get two gold. The second card lets you take all the cards from one of the stores or one of the bazaar booths, the market, and place them face up in front of you. So that you can see that one costs four gold if you play it the first day. But I can say I'll, I'll take all these blues here. Or I can take this red and this gold and I put them in front of me so everybody can see what I have. The next card is trade. In trade you can take all the cards from a store and put them on this card. So not down here from the bazaar booths but up there you can take from a store and you put them on the card. You don't actually get those until the end of the day. They sit on the card. Or you can take a noble. Now in each turn we're going to add another noble to the table. So for example um, here it is Noble. Your fake gems are safe for the remainder of the current market day whenever you use the Bakshish. And I'll talk more about how that works later. But usually what they do is they move along and you can buy them. If you notice underneath them there's a number and that's how much it costs in gems. So I could pay some, some blue gems, maybe three blue gems and two red gems and buy this card. And every time I use the trade card I can now add the cards to my display immediately instead of making them sit on the card. Also, this card here is worth a victory point. These cards are stacked, so as time goes by, sometimes they're just worth victory points, like this one, as they get closer to the end of the game, or this one here, which is worth six victory points. Sometimes they're very useful abilities. When you sell, you can advance the gem token two more spaces. So we, when you take play the trade card, you can buy one of those face-up nobles. The next card is exchange. You can take one of your gem cards and exchange it with one in a shop uh, that's of the same type um, or one of the bizarre booths. So if I have, for example, a one blue gem, I could exchange it with this and now I have the two blue gem. The next one, and this is the most important card of the group, and that's sale. Now, the first thing we should note before sale is that there's different kinds of gems. If you look down here at the pile of gems that I've collected thus far, you'll notice that I have two blues, 
um, a triple red ruby and a gold. But if you look on that ruby, there's this little merchant here. And what that means is those gems are fake. And I know they're fake. Now I have the option to sell them, but anytime anybody makes a successful sale, each other player has to discard one of their cards that are fake because the inspectors come through. And so you want to get rid of these as quickly as you can, which is why in this game turn order is so very important because going first, selling yours, you can mess everybody else up. Now when you sell jewels, you have two options. You can sell four different colors of jewels. So if I had blue, green, red, and white, I could sell four of those. I can also substitute gold for one of those when I get the gold. Whenever you take a gold card, you can immediately take the money or you can put it in your pile and this is when you would use gold as a substitute when you're selling four different types. Or I can sell as much of one type as I possibly can provided one other player also has that type in front of them. So I have six blues. As long as someone else has at least one blue, I can sell blues. After I discard them, I'm going to get rewarded. If I sell four different types, let's say I sold these four here, um, I can then pick one of the cards, and here let's say I'll pick the rubies, uh, which shows a three red, and I would move the red forward three spaces. If I'd pick the green, I'd move the green forward two spaces. If I'd pick the blue, blue forward two. If I'd pick the, this one, I would move the white one too. If I'm selling one type of goods, let's say I'm selling blues and I have six, I look at whoever has the second most of that type. Let's say someone else has two. Then I get to move the blue one forward four. One, two, three, four. The reason you want to move these forward is, you'll, you can see here at the top, at the end of the game, these are going to be worth victory points. First, you get a jewel in the first slot, four, eight, ten, I mean, 11, 14, 16, 18, 19, and 20. Diminishing returns, and it's for the betterment if you manage to get them all at least one space because the first spot is four, the second spot's four, the third spot, three, three, two, two, one, one. And you can't ever go off the track. So that's one of the main ways to get victory points other than the different um, noble cards that you can get. Then, let's see, are there any other cards that we haven't mentioned yet? Yes, there is. We have the, we mentioned the sale card. Then we have the doppelganger card. The doppelganger card does whatever your previous action was. So let's say I sold on turn one. I could play the doppelganger card here and it would repeat that sale and do it again. And then finally, there's a bribe card. My fake gems are safe. So if you play a bribe card in the first part of a day, the next two cards that are played, your gems are safe. Again, turn order matters. So if one, someone sells before your bribe card goes off, your gems are not safe. And so those are the different cards you play at the end of a day. You will get all the cards that you've played, all three cards back into your hand and you can play them again. We'll be adding more gems here to the middle. The nobles will move over and more nobles are added to the middle of the table. More gems are added and we start another round. When the last noble card hits the table, that will be the final turn of the game at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points from here and from nobles that they've collected and from victory point cards that they've collected, which are one, two, and three cards, whoever has the most points is the winner. This game works. It works well. I don't like it. <laughs> and let me tell you why I'm not a fan of this game. The, the, the artwork and the components are fine. Uh, the, everything looks good. I would have made the nobles different instead of having different color elephants, but I do like how the color of the elephant and noble matches the card that you have. The nobles are the best part of the game. I really like them. Uh, the, when you buy one of those, it modifies how one of these cards works many times, and that's a pretty neat thing. Like the, the Baxish, the one that gives you two gold, I, 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 there's a noble here that lets you also make this so that your gems are safe. So when you're playing that, you're getting two gold and your gems. It's like a double action card. That is a great idea and the best idea this game has. It's really fantastic. The problem is I have these cards that I can play each turn. And so here I have the cards. There are seven different cards that I can play. The problem is these cards are downright boring. It isn't like, ooh, what card will I play next? I mean, here, this keeps my gem safe, all right? This one, Doppelganger, repeats the previous played action, so you really only have six. Uh, here I have Selling. That's a really important one, although it can be really frustrating when you try to sell someone went before you and made some of your gems disappear. However, you could certainly say that's your own fault for letting that happen, okay? 
Taking all the gems from a pile. That's a good card. Move your gold token forward two spaces. That's boring, but useful. Take all the gems from a card, take a noble. Cool. Exchange one of your cards with the one on the board. Not very useful. I mean, okay, it's a little useful. Ooh, I traded a one for a three. But honestly, if that three's out there, someone's just gonna grab it anyway. Why exchange when you can take one? I mean, yeah, you could probably get rid of maybe some of your fake jewels for real ones, but at the same time, those cards on the board are gonna be grabbed so very often. The fact is, these aren't very many options. It's like, oh, I'm gonna take some cards, I'm gonna sell those cards. I'm gonna take some cards, I'm gonna sell those cards. There's not a lot in the game, so it's not like, ooh, what is my opponent gonna do? I know what they're going to do. And I just felt like these cards, now as the game progresses and there's nobles out there and these cards change, it's interesting, but again, if the noble makes one of my cards better, then it's pretty obvious that I'm gonna play that card as much as I possibly can. I, this is one of those things, I don't know how to explain it to you folks, um, because even as I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, man, that does sound kind of cool. It worked, but it didn't work in the course of the game. It, well, it worked, but it was boring. And that's one of my biggest problems I have with the game is boring. There was never excitement like, ooh, what cards can be turned over? And that gold track is not really gold. It's just a fancy turn order track. That's all it is. Um, as you spend gold, and, and honestly, if you spend all your gold and you go down to the bottom of the track, then everyone gets to go before you, which is really annoying because they get to take things before you. So it's important to keep that track moving around, but it almost felt too, too annoying. The money and the currency felt like a fake, I, I don't, uh, this is a hard one for me to review in a sense because I'm trying to convey my feelings over how I didn't like the game because it just, everything was just blah. And it sounded good on the surface, but when playing the game, and it's most interesting as a four-player game, a two-player game, oh my goodness, just even more boring, just, I love this idea. And I love the idea of modifying these. I would actually like having these cards and then discarding them and getting a new card, and then you have different cards in your hand to play. But, ooh, that's a good idea for a game. But anyhow, um, this is a solid game, and I think some people are going to like it. But I think for many people, if you're like me and you're looking for some more excitement in games, I'm not saying I need it swashbuckling and swords. I just wanted it to be like, ooh, what card am I going to play? You know, what's going to happen next? And that feeling was never there. The game almost feel, felt a little scripted on how it was played. And that is just, to me, a big flaw in the game. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.